Welcome to Design Domination, where you'll learn to become a better, more business-savvy designer so you can dominate your competition. Hi, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Colleen Grotzer, and in this episode of Design Domination, I'm talking about squashing self-doubt and owning your expertise. Stick around to find out how this affects your business. And I'll share my own story, and I'll also share ways to show that you're an expert. I see so many designers who are afraid to call themselves an expert or step up and act like one in whatever work it is that they're doing. If you're one of them, this is for you. You lack confidence. Lack of confidence creates a snowball effect in your business. You don't realize how much you know, and you don't own what you do know. Even though you know you can do the work, you don't necessarily come across confidently. If you lose out on work, you take a hit to your self-esteem. And that just sets you back mentally, which doesn't help you get the next project. You end up agreeing to work with bad clients who might bully you or question everything you do. This only further diminishes your self-esteem. You're afraid to raise your rates because you're unsure if your skills are good enough to justify it or if clients will pay those higher rates. And because you think there's thousands of other people more qualified than you or who will quote less for the work. After all, clients could go to Fiverr, right? But if you charge too little, that's a red flag to clients who expect to pay more. It will make them question the quality of the work if your pricing isn't in alignment with their expectations. You also fear you can't prove that your work gets results for your clients. But your client still plays a part in running their business. The success of their business, the results that they get, those are not all on you. Maybe you don't want to charge more because you can get it done so quickly. Or you love what you're doing. You know, if I can design that logo in an hour, why should I charge $5,000 or $10,000? I see some designers ask that a lot. David C. Baker recently tweeted, There's this weird thing that happens in your brain. You hesitate to charge as much for things that require your deepest expertise. Because they're easy, for you. And you raise value objections that don't even occur to your client. You're your own enemy, my friend. This is so true. If you become more of an expert in something, of course you'll be better and faster at it. So why the heck would you charge less? Will you call yourself an expert only after you take one more course or get whatever certification? What will it take for you to call yourself an expert? Of course, what that really could be is you seeking external validation because the confidence isn't coming from within. And I get it. It pains me to see designers in these scenarios because I lived these scenarios for so many years. It often seems like everybody else is winning bigger, better work. Work that you want. Work that you're also qualified for. After all, there are more qualified designers out there, right? And not necessarily even better designers, but designers with not so great design skills making good money. Listen, a lot of these are business issues that are actually symptoms of a bigger problem. A confidence problem. A mindset issue. Once you can get over the mindset shifts that need to happen, your business will transform. I know this from my own experience. I had self-limiting beliefs I didn't even know I had. Several years ago, I ended up joining a coaching call that was part of a paid online community I was a member of. A leadership coach was leading the call. I just so happened to be the only person on the call at that moment. And let me tell you, this was a time when I did not show my face or get on and talk on any of these kinds of calls. I kept the built-in camera on my computer covered, and I was just always a bystander. Since I was the only one on the call at that time, she just so happened to ask me a few questions about myself and what I did. And when I told her I was a graphic designer, she was like, well, tell me what you do. So I told her about all the things that I did in my business and how long I'd been doing it. And then she asked me why I called myself just a graphic designer. I said I'd never thought about it. She restated how many years, decades, that I'd been doing this. Why would I not call myself a creative director or something that reflected my expertise more accurately? 
It had never occurred to me, actually. It seemed to describe what I had been doing, after all. She asked me where these self-limiting beliefs could be from. And again, I didn't know I had any. I started thinking about how my accomplishments when I was in school weren't really celebrated. When I got B's, it was, well, why didn't you get A's? I never felt like I was doing enough, that I was accomplishing enough. And then I was bullied in grade school, a private school. I didn't want to participate and answer questions in class unless forced to, like when I was called upon, for fear of being criticized. Why would I put myself out there? Why would I want to show that I knew the answer to the teacher's question when I'd only be teased about it later? Grade school was a very toxic environment for me. I felt sick having to go there every day. Some days I actually did get sick before leaving for school from my nerves. I couldn't eat before school because my stomach was always bothering me from the stress. So anyway, with this coach's help on that call, I was able to identify where these self-limiting beliefs had come from. And you can actually hear more about that in the podcast episode with her on imposter syndrome. At some point, a few months later, I joined a different online community at the suggestion of someone I knew from the other community. It was one that I had access to as part of a course to help you have a better business. It too was life-changing. But at first, in the community, I was afraid to step up and participate. I mean, what if I said something that didn't align with what was taught in the course, which I hadn't yet finished, and so I didn't want to give out bad advice. Even though I had almost 20 years of experience at that time, I still felt like my expertise wasn't enough. And I knew of people with fewer years of experience who seemed to be more successful. Maybe they were. Maybe they weren't. It just seemed to be that way to me. They were clear on what they did for their clients. They seemed to be enjoying their work. They were charging more than I was at the time. Meanwhile, I was drowning in a business that was controlling me. I wasn't getting jobs from prospects that I was well qualified for. Clients were paying late. I hadn't raised my rates with some clients in like five years. Yeah, five years. I was miserable. I didn't trust my decisions, even though they were good ones. I mean, after all, I had been making a good living since going out on my own in 2003. I was a people pleaser. I was subconsciously seeking approval, like I had in my school days. But now it was with clients instead of fellow students. The more I started realizing this, the more I was able to identify certain behaviors and then change them. I started waking up more and more and seeing where I could take action to fix these issues because, darn it, I was supposed to be in charge of my business, not anyone else in charge of my business. Why the heck am I putting up with this client or this one? And why am I continuing to take on this particular type of work that I hate? So I fired bully clients. I let go of ones who weren't a good fit. And then I accidentally ended up working with a coach who really shook things up. And I mean that. It was like they gave me a virtual shaking. And I say accidentally because I wasn't even looking for more coaching. I met one of them through another online community where I happened to post some business questions. And she saw my questions and sent me some other questions and discovered that what I wanted was much more deeply rooted than it had appeared to me. After working together, my business and I changed so much. I was more confident in talking with clients. I was charging what I should have been all along. I honed in on services that I wanted to provide. I rid the business of the bad clients and I only worked with people I wanted to work with. It was a complete transformation all around. In other words, my business issues were not all business issues. And then a couple years ago, I was talking with someone who owns an outsourcing company to help me hire someone. What I thought would be a conversation about getting clarity on what I was looking for in hiring someone actually ended up being a, what do you really want to be doing and what do you want out of life conversation? My mind was blown. (laughs) I told him how for years I had had this idea to help designers. I really wanted to help them build their confidence, teach what I knew, share my struggles and what I'd learned, and so forth. I just didn't know how to go about it. 
He told me to start a podcast to reach this new audience. You. I told him podcasting was up there with planes and public speaking. The three Ps, I called them. Things that make me cringe. (laughs) They were on my never do list. (laughs) But seriously, I mean, why would I put myself out there? It had never felt good to do that in the past. But the fear of not trying this, not doing something I really wanted to do, was so much bigger than my fear of actually doing it. So I started the podcast, and I was terrified. I was expecting that people would say I was dumb to have put up with some of the clients that I had put up with, or that I wasn't giving good advice, or whatever. In fact, the opposite happened. I got amazing feedback, actually, from the very beginning. People continue to tell me all the time how much what I've shared has helped them and how they relate to my stories, how they're charging more as a result, how they're not taking on potentially bad clients who aren't a good fit. Lots of wonderful feedback that I never could have imagined. And honestly, I wasn't used to that. (laughs) I share this with you to show you that mindset issues affect your business. They are what will hold your business back. They will keep you from being confident. They will keep you from being more assertive and setting boundaries with clients. They will prevent you from charging more. They will keep you stuck. They may even keep you in fear or doubt. You only have to know more than the client to be the expert. We're all always learning. There's always going to be someone ahead of us or behind us in terms of how much we know on any given subject. There might be different ways of doing things and not necessarily one set path. Even the big name experts who seem to have it all figured out have had coaching. There are experts at different levels. You don't need to be number one in everything at any given time. You don't need to know everything. No one does. Stop comparing yourself to others and what you think you know about their situation and own yours. Everyone's always at a different place in their career or mindset or level of skill. Own where you are now at this moment with the knowledge that you have. Now, demonstrating your expertise doesn't mean talking about what you do in a boastful or salesy way. It's simply sharing what you know. You can do this in so many ways. You can speak at a meetup. I know public speaking can be daunting, believe me, but you don't have to do it in a large group and you can do it with just a few colleagues that you know if you want. Get involved in discussions in Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups or industry-related online forums. Answer the questions that people have. There are people out there who need your expertise. Write blog posts and then repurpose those articles on LinkedIn and Medium. Share them on social media. Hold a webinar on a particular topic that would be of interest to your potential and existing clients. Maybe even have a colleague who offers a complimentary service join you if you like. Create case studies for your work on your website. Remember, no one wants a design just to have something that looks nice. They want what it will do for them. You have to show that you understand that aspect of the business side of design. Anticipate clients' needs instead of waiting for them to come to you and ask for something. Be proactive and reach out to clients rather than waiting for them to bestow work upon you, which can put you in more of the order taker position. Focus on talking about the type of work you do well and want to get more of instead of on everything that you're capable of doing. It won't make you memorable when the time comes that someone has a need. Don't talk about work that you don't want to get. Because you'll end up getting that work, and then you won't have any passion for it and may not care as much about doing an excellent job. And that will hurt your confidence, and it won't be good for the client either. Now, when you do these things, it does many things. You come across as caring and helpful, not as trying to sell anyone on anything, which is a huge turnoff and puts people on the defensive. You show some of your expertise that others can learn from. You educate potential clients about why they need your help. They may not otherwise know that they have a problem that needs to be fixed. You stay top of mind when you do these things regularly. 
You see how much others, which could be other designers or clients, learn from you based on the feedback on your posts and comments. When your posts get some likes and comments, they gain traction. They get seen by more people, which increases your reach. When you start sharing your expertise, it will help you own your expertise. You will realize how much you actually know that others don't. You'll become more confident as a result. And when you're more confident, it helps you attract better clients, ones who respect your expertise. And you'll realize your value is greater than what you thought and find clients who are willing to pay for that. You'll be more selective with the clients you work with instead of working with anyone who comes along. So you'll work with those who are a better fit and respect you and your boundaries. You may even start to realize other positive things about yourself in the process. If you need help with your confidence or another freelancing issue, you can inquire about mentoring sessions with me. And if you're looking to enhance your expertise, be sure to check out my brand identity builder, which gives you a brand identity process from sales to showcasing the final work. And that will allow you to charge more and be seen as a strategic expert. You'll have more confidence having this process and then knowing which questions to ask and what to do when at every step of the process. Also check out my soon to be released accessible branding course. It's not just for logo designers and this will really enhance your expertise and help you stand out from other designers because most designers are not talking about accessibility. Was this helpful to you? I really hope it was. And I'd love to hear from you and I'd greatly appreciate if you shared it with others. Do you want to get more respect and command higher rates? I can help you go from order taker to expert through mentoring, my free guides, and premium resources, such as my brand style guide builder, brand identity builder, and my website accessibility course. You can find out more at creative-boost.com. You can also join me and other creatives in the Design Domination Facebook group.